Anyone else? Along that note, a couple of us left talking about the fact that we've kind of gotten in a rut re recently with, you know, just worship, we stand there and clap our hands, maybe raise our hands once in a while. We need to get out of that rut. We are a Pentecostal church and we need to act like it. <laughs> so if anybody wants to come down to the front to worship, that's what we do at, at retreat. Uh, this altar space is just filled with women worshiping and dancing. A couple of us went down there, and it was amazing. You get a completely different spirit down there. So if you want to come down and worship, it is open. Feel free.
hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival, the sound of And this, the power that we have over the enemy is through the, the spirit that we have. And we're so thankful, Lord, that we can come into your presence and expecting your spirit to just join us and be lifted up, Lord, in, in our worship today. Love. 
God changed during that song. It's like it just flooded over us. And we know that that's where we, where we are strong. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for his presence that's here. That's 
Saw somebody else raise it. Well, Powder Springs, Georgia. Somebody. <laughs> Can I say it? We're glad to have you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you. It's wonderful to be in the house. I love to have fun. I love to be ha have fun in the house of the Lord. It's just a good time with our. our brothers and his sisters. I wanted to go to the women's retreat with them, <laughs> but I figured if I did, it'd be the first lynching in the campgrounds. <laughs> so Sandy advised me not to go, which I, I took her advice. <laughs> and all the women said amen. <laughs> <clears throat> Last Sunday, wasn't it amazing? Last Sunday we had our state overseer Brother Pastor Harris, come up, <coughs> excuse me, and minister to us. And I tell you, there was a great outpouring of God's spirit in this place. And uh, he blessed me, and I know he blessed you, those that were here. And, you know, God is still here. He didn't go away with Pastor Harris. He's still here. Now, I believe God's Holy Spirit wants to touch every one of us here today. I believe that. Amen. I believe that Jesus Christ wants to show himself to you today. We love him. And he loves us. And I am so, so happy to be part of the family of God. We're all one big family. Amen. No matter where we come from, across the borders, wherever, we're all one big family. Born again and trusting in the Lord day after day. And uh, I appreciate you being here. But I have a little bit of uh, problem with the sound system this morning, but we'll work our way through it. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning. Two weeks ago, I spoke on faith. And there's something I want to bring out, and uh, I'm not going to preach my entire sermon on faith, but I want to bring out some things I didn't touch on. Let me find my, my, my place. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 1, well, you can all quote that. For faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. The evidence of things not seen. What is faith? We, we, we try to dissect this and look at it in all different ways. And we've heard this preached on a thousand times. But when we get right down to it, what is faith? Faith. I want you to picture my, if I take a note, draw a triangle. God at the top. What is God? God is love. God is love. 
from the top of your triangle, draw down to the left-hand corner. What does God love? God loves me. God loves you. Amen? And I love God. And you love God. Go to the right bottom of that triangle. What I want you to put in there. God loves others. I love others. You love others. Amen? You see where I'm going with this? God is love. It's because of his love that he loves us first. We love him. And through our walk of faith, we I preached on faith week before last. And when we look at this passage, the scripture, as we get into walking in the faith, trials and battles and troubles that we go through, God's in every part of it. Amen. I've expressed that to you, preached that to you, explained that to you. And, and we get to a point where we think, is this the entirety of our Christian walk with its troubles and tribulations and trials? No, it's not. Because the outcome of our walk in faith with God, there's a great outcome where he wants to take us to. When this building was built, somebody purchased it, the property. There was a blueprint drawn up. Somebody had plans to put this church in this place. Why did they have plans to put this church in this position? First of all, it was God's plan. Second, whoever built this, Larry, I don't know if you know who the first pastor was. You know history about this church, but this place was placed here by acts of faith. By acts of faith. A plan that was drawn up. And right now, is the most important thing in your life. And it says, I'm going to tell you something. You're going, to, you're going to die. This is exactly what I said. I was very open and I wasn't blunt. I said, you're going to die. I said, and you're going to make a decision today. You're either going to go to hell or you're going to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven. That's the, where you're at right now. And I explained to her the crucifixion. Jesus is dying on the cross. I said, and thieves on both sides of him. And I said, one said, if you be the son of God, save yourself and us too. I said, Betty, the other man said, if you be the son of God, remember me this day in paradise. I said, it's, you've got to decide today if you're going to live and give your heart and life to God right now or you're going to go to hell. She says, well, I know there's something out there. I said, there is. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. That's your decision. I said, and it's eternal. You can live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever, or you can burn in hell forever. It won't stop the torment. I said, will you pray with me? She says, yes. I took her by the hand. I led her in a sinner's prayer. I had my eyes closed, and I, I just finished. I hadn't even opened my eyes, and she says, they're gone. And I says, what? She says, they're gone, and she was crying like a baby. She says, they're gone. I said, what's gone? She says, my sins, I can feel like a load lifting off me. The experience in that room, the Lord was there. I said, Betty, before you close your eyes tonight, talk to him. Because he's here in this room with you, and he's not going to go away. He's in your heart now. You belong to him. I, I, I said, when you get up, wake up in the morning, talk to him. Pray to him. All day long, just worship him. Tell him what a great God he is. She said, I will. I said, Betty. I'm going to leave you into the hands of the Lord. And I'll see you up there. Left out of that place shortly after. She went on home to be with the Lord. 
that's just what you can get into on the outside of these walls, and that's what God wants you to. I'm not, I'm nobody special. I'm not a Pharisee. I'm not out here trying to make it look like I'm so spiritual. I'm not. I'm just fulfilling a, a position right now to get this church through. That's what God's love can do for you. Become an exceptional Christian. Love God as he loves you and love others. That your, your desires for God and your plans for God lines up with his plans, not your plans. That his attributes will control your attributes. You, I said this before. You, you, you hang around somebody long enough, you know what their character is. You get enough, you hang around with God, he's going to let you know what his, his character is, his attributes. Why? Because he's a magnificent God. And that's what we're looking for, the magnificence of God. In our walk of life, our walk of faith, whatever you want to call it, God's got has a plan laid out for each and every one of us. And he's taken that, us down this road of what we call life. And he's got an individual plan and decisions made out for every one of us. And what he's saying, let my love guide you and strengthen you and take you through these obstacles that my son overcame. He's saying to you and I, if my son can do it, you can do it with my love. Amen. Do you want to be an exceptional Christian? Have an exceptional walk of faith? Know God's attributes. Know God's word. Have a prayer life that touches God and he touches you. Guarantee it. He's got good things. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you know why he said that the joy of the Lord is my strength? Because in this walk of faith, sometimes we get down in the valleys. Sometimes we're, we're in the mountains, the high spots, the high places. And sometimes we just get to a place in God and we just say, God, I don't know what to do. And then God says in a small circle, Stand and behold the salvation of the Lord. Stand and watch what I do. He gets us into a place many times where he wants to hear from us. Sometimes we, we kind of back off our walk in the faith. And he puts us in a place where I need to hear from Jerry. I was going to say Kirk. <laughs> I need to hear from you. He wants us to rely on him. Why? Because his, his love is our greatest treasure. His love is our greatest treasure. We, we to hold on to it. Use his, realize what his love is for us. His love is our greatest treasure. What's his love? What's his treasure? Us. We and you are God's greatest treasure. And it's like it, like anything. If, if I have a big bank account, guess what? I'm going to guard it. I'm going to add to it if I can. That's what faith is. It's, just think of yourself. You, you invest. The way you invest and you, you have a, a good-sized bank account. And it's FDI, FIDC, is that how it's FDIC, I was right the first time. You messed me up. <laughs> it's insured. It's, your, your account is insured by the, the bank federal government. So what do you do? You have faith that when you want to go make a withdrawal, your money's going to be there. It's assurance. And we have to have the full assurance of God that he's walking through this life with us. 
and that everything that we need spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, he provides for us strength day after day after day. We, we, when we want to go to that bank account and withdraw money, it, that assurance, it sounds like insurance. But we invest a lot in our walk with the Lord. He invests a lot in us. It's that assurance that keeps us holding, knowing in who you are in God. The assurance that, Logan, you can do it. You can do all things. Leader of this youth group, let me tell you, you're the leader. You're the one that God's placed in charge. Put in that position right here. And your wife is your helpmate. You two are going to bless this. These you, you keep doing what you're doing. Seeking after God and praying. But I know he's got the assurance. I, I, just, I just believe he's got the assurance that he can do the job what God wants him to do with his wife's help. That assurance that keeps us holding on to his word that we have insurance. Assurance and insurance. Assurance we invest in. We we hold on to it. Insurance, what is it? It pays out. It pays out. What we invest into, and we, my wife's probably got a half a million dollar insurance policy on me. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> and if something happens to me, oh, what a happy day. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but it's going to pay out. It's going to, and that's the way God has his system set up or his plans, that we give our hearts and life totally. That's what makes an exceptional Christian, an exceptional walk of faith, that we give our life totally to him, not just a one day out of the week or a couple of days, day after day, night after, every time, every second minute, of, that we give our hearts and life to him and we realize that he's in control, sold out to him. Sometimes, and I'm almost done, just going, my fact, the music can come up. Sometimes, this walk of faith, we have to make radical decisions. That's where, sometimes that's what it brings us to. We have to make, Pastor Harris made a radical decision that he shared with us. His son addicted. Like to drugs. And it was another church member, he says, that got him addicted. Time after time, he dealt with his son about this addiction. He had to make a radical decision. He told his son, You either go into rehab or you're out of the house. That's pretty radical. And that's sometimes what we have to do. When we come to cross certain situations and, and battles that we go, we got to make a radi radical decision. I'm going to go through this battle, and I don't care who's going to help me or not, but I'm going to trust in the Lord. And he's going to bring me through it. You get in a tough spot. One of the things, let me explain this to you. When you get in a tough spot, you're a born-again believer. God wants us. He loves me. I love him. He loves others. I love others. Others. When I get in a situation, I need help. I need prayer. I'm going to notify you people. My wife is going to call you people. Say, she's back there. We have people are praying for him. People are praying for him. Why? Because that's part of God's plan. God loves him. He loves God. People are praying that God will touch him. We need one another. We all need God. And I'm telling you that God can take you. I, when I say know yourself, when I say realize who you are, that you 
Don't think lowly of yourself. Say, well, I don't, I can't do this. I don't have this kind of a gift. I don't, I, they're, they're better at this than that than I, than I am. Realize that you are an individual. When God deals with you, when God deals with me, he deals with me as an individual. He speaks to my heart. I'm going to say this real quick. When you say it has nothing to do with what you, it, it does. We, we're such a, a generation, amazing generation. We have all these electronic controls, devices. We have all these electronic devices. And it's <coughs> opened up a tremendous blessings to the world. But it's also brought in a lot of sinfulness. But when we, we look at these things, we need to be careful with what we watch and hear. I have relatives. I, I believe they're actually hooked on, on prophets, on prophecies. I, I turned the TV on just the other day, and I'm closing. Turn the TV on the other day. I, I watched this preacher was on. I watched him two minutes. He had a group of people, not a big group, sitting in front of him. He's, and I heard him say, are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Get ready for what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something so vital to you. Get ready for it. Are you ready for it? You need to prophesy for yourself and to yourself. Whoa. That's not even scriptural. If you want a prophecy, let this be your prophecy. Amen. Let this word of God, get into your word if you don't. Let this word be, you want to know about the end times? What's going on today? What's happening? Where we're going with this? This is the prophet right here to tell you. And I'm telling you, we're headed for some, some stormy weather, people. We're heading for some, some dark times. But at the end of the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel, there's our payout. Everlasting life with Jesus Christ. Everlasting life with Jesus Christ. Play something, ladies. I love you. Father, I pray that you would just move by your spirit, that you would minister. 
that, Lord, if it's salvation that he has need of, touch him and minister to him. Give him that salvation, save him, Lord God. Lord, just pour your spirit into him. Bless him and touch him. Well, we'll stand. Is there anybody here that needs prayer physically? Or any type of prayer you need to see? Going through situations? All right. You need prayer, Jay? No, no. You need prayer? Stretch forth your hands towards my brother. We're going to pray. Take joy, my King.
Next Sunday we'll have communion. I love communion services. But uh, show yourself friendly with love as you go out and greet a visitor. I don't know if anybody's said anything. On the back table back there, there's a book. If you register, just sign in if you will. The often box back there where you can put your tithes and offerings is on the table also. Love you. You pray for me. Pray for us, Sandy and I. And uh, we're going to be praying for you. And we love you guys. And we pray God's blessings upon you. Brother Kerr, would you dismiss us? Amen. God bless you. Be friendly.